Even on the best days, flying can be a real hassle. It's cramped, and there's always either a baby crying or someone staggering into you on their way to the restroom. But those minor inconveniences are nothing compared to the heights of horror some flights have soared to. I'm talking the kind of horror that makes those stinky feet propped up behind your head seem like a wonderful gift. So go ahead and strap yourself in for turbulence, because here are some of the worst things to happen on airplanes. Unexpected Guest Passengers on an Aeromexico flight from Torian, Mexico to Mexico City had the fright of their lives in November 2016, when some unapproved cargo made itself known mid-flight. In D'Alessio Medina, one of the passengers was reading a magazine, when the person next to him gasped and pointed at the overhead luggage compartment. Like a scene straight out of the Samuel Jackson thriller Snakes on a Plane, Indalesio saw a three-feet-long, venomous green viper wriggling above them. The surrounding passengers hastily unbuckled themselves to get clear of the snake just as it dropped onto the floor and slithered in between the seats. Using blankets provided by flight attendants, several brave passengers managed to trap the viper between rows five and six before it could hurt anybody. After the pilot radioed ahead, the plane was given priority landing in Mexico City, where it touched down 10 minutes later. Even though the Viper was safely contained, passengers were evacuated out of the rear of the plane, and animal control came on board to take the scaly stowaway into custody. Aeromexico did launch an investigation into how the snake had gotten into the cabin, but their findings were never made public. At least we know Aeromexico takes good care of all its passengers, regardless of whether they paid airfare. Not only did the flight attendants give the snake multiple blankets, but it also got its own priority landing and a personal escort off the aircraft. Stand aside, Samuel Jackson. It looks like the real star has arrived. Big Bang Picture this. You're up in the clouds and want to take a photo of the view. But when you turn to the window, you see this. Horrifying, right? Well, that image of a plane engine which lost its paneling mid-flight back in 2008 might be pretty alarming, but it's nothing on something that happened in February 2021. Passengers were just settling into their flight from Denver, Colorado to Hawaii when a bang came from the right side of the plane. Straight away, the aircraft started to shake and they were rapidly losing altitude. Passengers were so frightened, some of them put their wallets in their pockets to be ID'd in case they crashed and didn't survive. So what was the cause of the bang? As the passengers looked out the window, they were horrified to see the right-hand engine ablaze and stripped of its casing. The pilot announced that the plane had suffered an unexplained engine failure and they'd promptly be returning to Denver. Miraculously, all 241 people on board walked away unscathed, although the same can't be said for the homes of some unlucky citizens in Broomfield, Colorado. Why? Well, when the blazing engine we've just seen lost its casing, gravity sent it hurtling to the ground like a frisbee, and while most other debris was obliterated upon impact, the main casing ring was found surprisingly intact in one homeowner Kirby Clements's front yard. Kirby said he initially thought it was his neighbor's trampoline that had blown over the wall, and only realized it was something way crazier when he went outside. Another local homeowner said he was making himself a sandwich when a piece of debris came crashing through his kitchen ceiling. I think it's safe to say he lost his appetite after that. Luckily though, other than a couple of cases of property damage, no citizens were actually injured. As for what caused the engine to initially catch fire, the airline never released an explanation. Most likely a rotating part, such as a turbine blade, broke off and pierced the outer casing, resulting in the failure. Or perhaps an unfortunate bird was sucked up into the engine, having been considerably less lucky than those 241 humans on board. Dead Stick Landing 
In September 2016, Mark Pennell was enjoying a leisurely flight in his RANS S10 Sakota above Camillus, New York, when his single-engine plane all of a sudden lost its propeller. Luckily, Mark had undergone adequate training for a dead stick landing, a landing in which the propeller is rendered useless, or, in this case, totally absent. But amazingly, Mark didn't even notice the propeller was missing, and instead just assumed there was something wrong with it or the engine. At 7,000 feet above the ground, Mark was focused solely on the nearby Weedsport Airport, and whether he had enough altitude to land. He knew he had to pitch the plane for the best glide speed, which allowed it to cover the farthest distance possible from his altitude. Not knowing the propeller was missing, Mark repeatedly tried to restart the engine, which was actually still buzzing away propellerless. It was only after he landed and stepped back to examine the plane that he noticed the real cause of the problem. Mark was in disbelief and a little ashamed as he realized he hadn't secured the bolts as tightly as the plane's instructions suggested when he first put on the propeller. As far as where the wayward propeller ended up, Mark tried looking for it but never found it. Hopefully nobody tried to catch it down below. Aviation Bonfire Anthony Cario was ready to have the summer of his life in Ibiza in July 2018, when the plane that was meant to take him there ended up being evacuated before it even left the runway. The Boeing 737 was all set to depart from Barcelona when a worrying spark burst into life somewhere down Anthony's row. He looked over to see a phone attached to a battery pack blazing on the floor by another passenger's feet, and being a true man of the modern age, he whipped out his phone to film it. But don't worry, that's not all Anthony did. While the passengers around him were scrambling to evacuate, Anthony took it upon himself to extinguish the fire with a cup of water, which stopped the flames before the lithium battery could horrifically explode. Anthony ended up sharing the ordeal on social media where he also posted a video of himself sliding down the emergency exit of the plane. According to him, it was fun getting to evacuate without there being an actual emergency. But unlike Anthony, the airline, Ryanair, wasn't as thrilled. The airline voiced its disapproval regarding the use of battery packs on planes, and said that when taking one on board, it should either be switched off or packaged in a way to prevent contact with metal objects. This is because lithium-ion batteries contain volatile chemicals separated by a permeable membrane, which, if compromised, whether due to damage, compression, or a manufacturing fault, can lead to the rupture and ignition of the battery and its chemicals. I mean, that's enough to convince me. And you know, you could always just try the super neat life hack of actually charging your phone before you fly. Speaking of life hacks, why not hack your way into discovering all the best content by liking this video and subscribing to be amazed. And don't forget to press the bell so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Now let's take off to the next horrifying plane experience. Psychic Passenger For Redditor Mystic Curse, there's a reason one particular flight in October 2009 marked his last as a flight attendant for Northwest Airlines in the US. For starters, the two-hour flight between Minneapolis and Detroit had a self-proclaimed psychic among the passengers, who immediately took it upon herself to loudly announce the plane's imminent doom. 
She not only shouted that the plane was going to crash, but also that everyone on board was going to die. The rowdy psychic unsettled passengers to such an extent, Mystic Curse had to move her to a private section of the plane. But just as he managed to subdue the crazy lady, something extremely unnerving happened. The plane encountered some severe turbulence. Drinks flew through the air and luggage crashed down from overhead bins. It was a horrible scene and looked an awful lot like the psychic's prediction. But eventually, after what felt like forever, the plane reached Detroit. Only the horror wasn't over yet. And I don't just mean because they were in Detroit. Not only was the runway completely iced over, but the entire plane slid sideways when touching down. Amid all the screams, Mystic Curse awaited the plane to flip over. But it didn't. And as they finally came to a stop, every passenger on the plane burst into applause. Right away, airport security boarded the plane and detained the psychic, who had caused everyone on board to collectively poop their pants with her half-true prophecy. And Mystic Curse, being totally shaken up, quit as soon as the plane was unloaded. Honestly, I don't know which part of the story is the scariest. The fact that the plane almost flipped or that everyone on board became touchdown clappers. Aerial Maneuvers in the Dark In 1997, a Redditor with the username Former F-16 was flying in the Middle East for Operation Southern Watch, an air-centric military operation conducted by the U.S. Department of Defense. It was his third day patrolling the no-fly zone as part of a two-plane deployment, and they were set to take off at 11 o'clock at night. The brief and aircraft inspection all went normally, until the time came for former F-16 to align his inertial navigation system, or INS, which is used to continuously calculate the position, orientation, and velocity of the plane without the need for external references. When he entered the coordinates for where the plane was located, he accidentally entered for the Western Hemisphere instead of Eastern. With an incorrect entry like that, the INS would accept it, but the plane would stall as soon as it got going, seeing as the gyroscope wouldn't be able to match the coordinates with the plane's actual angle. Former F-16 immediately realized his error, but luckily there were numerous other delays, which allowed him time to realign it. After two hours extra waiting on the runway, they finally set off. And everything was going great, until they entered some ominous-looking weather 2,000 feet above the ground, and the INS glitched out with the re-inputted entries, losing the coordinates. Being at a 45-degree climb with no visibility and his main navigation system rendered useless, former F-16 had the choice to either maintain that angle until he got out of the weather or to rely on his standby altitude indicator, a manual device measuring the plane's orientation, and continue the departure as briefed. The Redditor chose the latter option, even though in the quickly darkening night, he couldn't properly see the indicator to determine the angle to level out. His first indication that things were not going well was when the sound of wind bashing at the plane started to increase. At this point, former F-16 had no idea which way was up or what altitude his aircraft was flying at. Ultimately, he began thinking he'd have to eject, as he was trained to do in that very situation. But the Redditor didn't want to give up. So instead of ejecting, he reached back and flicked as many of the plane's internal light switches as he could. As the floodlights lit up the cockpit, including the standby altitude indicator, former F-16 saw, to his horror, that he was not only 170 degrees off the angle he'd thought he was, but his nose was pointing at the ground. In milliseconds, he attempted to calculate how much altitude he'd have to recover to save the jet, and without raising the nose so high, he'd risk blacking out from the G-forces. So he pulled up and started to level out. According to his math, he'd completely leveled at 1,500 feet, which was more than enough to continue on safely. It was all going great until he looked out the window and spotted the ground rapidly approaching. 
As it turned out, he'd done his math wrong. Instead of leveling out at 1,500 feet above the ground, he was about to do so 500 feet below the ground. With certain death seeming imminent, the Redditor decided he wouldn't even have time to eject. Instead, he closed his eyes, pulled hard on the stick while lighting the afterburner in an attempt to pull upwards, while saying his last goodbyes to his wife in his head. Seconds passed, and suddenly, to his unimaginable belief, he could tell he was climbing. When he opened his eyes, he realized he'd passed the ground with a mere 20 feet to spare. Awestruck, former F-16 broke through the bad weather, realigned his INS, and caught up to the other jet. When he told the other pilot about what happened over the intercom, former F-16 was pleased to hear a response that said, Hey, what happens in flight stays in flight. And that was until they returned to the base. Apparently, a couple of airmen had seen his afterburner scorch the ground and reported it, thinking it might have been an enemy attack. Even so, former F-16 walked away from his terrifying experience with little more than a slap on the wrist, and, most likely, a pair of ruined underpants. Smoky Heights In March 2018, WestJet Flight 3161 was five minutes from Nanaimo Airport in Canada when the cabin began to fill with a smoky haze. One of the passengers notified a flight attendant who went to check the situation with the pilot. Minutes passed in which everyone just sat there breathing in the gassy, smelling air and painstakingly counting down the minutes to touchdown. Soon, an announcement was made that mentioned an emergency landing. And, as you can see in the footage captured, people grew increasingly tense inside the cabin. All right, everyone, please stay seated. I know this is a very uh, stressful situation, but the boys have everything in control up front. They are going to let us know if we need to emergency evacuate the airplane. So please, please just stay seated. As soon as the boys know what's going on, they're going to let us know, and we'll let you know. Thank you so much. You can probably imagine the dread you'd feel following an announcement like that. Soon, the pilot confirmed they were making an emergency landing, and once on the ground, the tension continued to escalate as everyone sought a quick exit. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Which side? In the back, I guess. Closest. Planes for blow up. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Go right ahead. Panic-stricken passengers were evacuated onto a closed runway, and emergency crews arrived shortly afterwards, who inspected the plane while all passengers were evaluated by paramedics. Thankfully, despite the general panic, everyone was fine, though some passengers couldn't help but wonder why oxygen masks weren't deployed. It turns out, according to WestJet, as the aircraft involved was only certified to a maximum altitude of 25,000 feet, it wasn't considered necessary to equip it with drop-down oxygen masks, which are typically used in much higher altitudes where the air is thinner. Still, that doesn't provide much comfort, considering how passengers might have suffocated from the smoke had it been spewing out when they weren't so close to their destination. As for what caused the smoke, WestJet did launch an investigation into the matter, but just like asking someone if they'd tooted in an elevator, they never publicized their findings. All we know for sure is, being stuck in an enclosed, cramped metal airplane filling with mysterious smoke is the stuff of nightmares, and something no one on board would ever want to repeat. Destination Destruction Looking at this American Airlines plane, you'd think it took a nosedive to the ground, but the gnarly amount of damage it sustained actually came from something far more unusual. In June 2018, Jesus Esparza boarded Flight 1897 from San Antonio, Texas to Phoenix, Arizona. What was supposed to be a quick two-hour journey soon turned out to be the scariest flight of his life. Not long after takeoff, the plane started rocking from side to side as it entered a huge thunderstorm, complete with huge hailstones that battered the plane's exterior. Babies screamed as lightning flashed outside, and as the turbulence got worse, the woman behind Jesus threw up into her barf bag. 
Then, suddenly, the plane dropped so hard, objects in people's laps were sent flying inside the plane. After several horrifying minutes of being pummeled by hail, the plane emerged from the storm. The pilot announced that he'd be making an emergency landing in El Paso to deal with some damage, which was a huge understatement, because unbeknownst to Jesus and his fellow passengers, the entire nose of the plane had been obliterated. What's more, the windshield was so badly shattered, the pilots had to land the plane virtually blind. Luckily, the plane landed safely with all 135 people on board uninjured. Despite the happy ending, Jesus stated that after he saw the plane from the outside, he decided not to travel again anytime soon. All things considered, I don't blame him. Faulty Landing Gear Redditor Acacia Wildwood couldn't believe his sister still worked as a flight attendant after she told him her scariest in-flight story. In the early 2000s, she was working a pretty uneventful flight from Hawaii to California, when just as they reached their destination, things started to go wrong. The pilot was doing the routine pre-landing checks and shockingly discovered that the landing gear wasn't deploying. After circling the airport to burn off extra fuel that could potentially explode on impact with the ground and with emergency personnel put into place at the airport, the plane began its descent. Acacia Wildwood's sister was sitting in a flight attendant seat up front when she made eye contact with a flight mechanic that happened to be on board. The mechanic looked in her eyes, and knowing the impossible odds of landing gear miraculously starting to work again mid-air, he gave her a shake of his head, letting her know the situation was extremely dire. The forces acting on people's bodies from the impact of landing on the plane's underbelly would be huge and most likely devastating. As they were landing, the flight attendants yelled at the passengers to brace themselves. As they all got in position for impact, Acacia Wildwood's sister really thought she'd never see her family again. Miraculously, though, at the very last moment, the landing gear deployed, saving the plane from landing on its belly. Everyone made it out safely. When Acacia Wildwood's sister finally left the plane, she was understandably reluctant to get back on it the next day. But her husband told her over the phone that if she didn't make that return trip, she'd almost certainly never have the capacity to fly again. So, she got the return flight as he suggested, and despite the traumatic incident, went on to work as a flight attendant with the airline for 15 more years. Talk about facing your fears. Up and up. If you're afraid of flying, which you probably are by now, feel free to avert your eyes, because once you've seen this, you can never unsee it. In June 2019, Mirjeta Basha was on a flight with her husband on their way from Kosovo to Switzerland, when 30 minutes into the two-hour flight, serious turbulence struck the aircraft. Having anticipated the turbulence, a flight attendant was collecting all drinks from passengers, when a sudden drop sent her right to the ceiling. As food containers flew, people began screaming and crying, and Mirjeta's husband even suffered burns from scalding water stored in the flight attendant's trolley. Despite the chaos, flight attendants assured the passengers that everything would be fine, and they were right. When the plane landed in Basel, Switzerland, handling agents at the airport already had emergency services waiting on the scene. Mirjeta's husband was one of 10 passengers who required minor medical assistance, but miraculously, the flying flight attendant was reported to be absolutely fine. With the ability to soar through the air like that, I'd say she deserves a promotion to pilot. Pilot Hero In October 2008, just after lunch on board Qantas Flight 72 from Singapore to Perth, Captain Kevin Sullivan noticed the plane's autopilot had stopped working. But with the northwest coast of Australia already in view, it didn't seem like much of a problem. That was, until the plane's controls also stopped working and the aircraft started pitching down, violently down. All Captain Sullivan could see through his windshield was the surface of the Indian Ocean. The plane was in a death dive, and Captain Sullivan, an ex-fighter pilot, knew he'd have to fight with everything he had to keep all 315 people on board alive. To put into perspective how extreme the dive was, a passenger, Carolyn Southcott, was returning from the toilet when the plane 
plane plummeted, and she hit the cabin's ceiling with enough force to do this, losing consciousness in the process. Meanwhile, Captain Sullivan was desperately trying to stabilize the plane. He tried letting go of the controls to neutralize them, and thankfully, it worked. The plane was no longer falling until, two minutes later, the plane took another dive. Everyone on board, including Captain Sullivan, thought they had met their grisly end. Somehow, though, Sullivan managed to re-stabilize the plane once more and kept it airborne just long enough to reach the Royal Australian Air Force Base at Learmonth on Australia's northwest coast. Captain Sullivan landed the plane entirely manually, all while knowing that at any moment the controls may fight back again. Carolyn, who had since woken up after her collision with the ceiling, was in a lot of pain and proved to be one of more than 100 passengers reported injured. That said, everyone survived, and some of the more seriously injured flyers, including Carolyn, received six-figure payouts from Qantas. And while Captain Sullivan himself didn't suffer any physical injuries, the event of that day haunted him so much that in 2016, he decided to stop flying altogether. In a post-accident examination, the Australian Transport Safety Bureau blamed incorrect data and software errors for the emergency, similar to the types of errors that later caused two Boeing 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019. Only, unlike in those more recent cases, Flight 72's gifted pilot Captain Sullivan was able to land the plane without any casualties. All I know is, if unpredictable, unavoidable, seemingly random airplane software glitches like these have been occurring since pre-2010 until as recently as 2019, I'll certainly be a little more nervous next time I board a plane. Have you ever had an in-flight horror experience of your own? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.